Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. This is Rohit from CareerSprints.com and in this video, I would like to talk about the changes that have been made to the PMP exam in 2021. Now these changes are an important update to the PMP exam and will determine how and what resources you might choose to prepare for the PMP exam. Please note that this video is a recording of the free live virtual class we finished recently. And we conduct these free PMP virtual classes regularly and talk about topics related to the PMP exam in these classes. We've benefited a huge community of PMP aspirants through these free virtual classes. So if you haven't registered for the class, please do so using the link in the description below. So let's dive in and talk about what are the key changes that you should be aware of, uh, you know, for the PMP exam in 2021. Right. So what PMI has done, you know, with the 2021 version of the exam is that, uh, you know, they have brought about a structural change to the uh, PMP exam. Right. So earlier, if you have written the PMP exam or if you've seen the syllabus of the PMP exam, the PMP exam is basically based on a document which is called the PMP exam content. Outline. Right. Uh, so you may have heard this term. It's also called the PMP eco, uh, you know, basically the exam content outline outlines all the different uh, areas of project management that PMI is going to test you on in the PMP exam. But, uh, you know, broadly what PMI has done is that, you know, they, uh, they have taken, uh, you know, they released this, uh, you know, this new content outline, uh, you know, in 2019. Uh, and this was for the, uh, you know, for the change that was going to happen in 2021. And uh, what they are basically saying is that now the exam will have three primary sections. So the first section would be people, the next section would be process, and the third section would be business environment. And these sections are basically called domains, right? Uh, that's what they are called. And uh, uh, each section basically addresses a specific area of project management that you should have a good understanding of to be able to clear the PMP exam. So basically the people domain, you know, would address all the elements that would come along with people. So it could be communication, it would be coordination, uh, you know, it would be uh, conflict resolution, it would be team formation, it would be team management, teamwork. So all these different elements that you can think with regards to people and communication, all of those elements would fall under the people domain. So, you know, even things like leadership or, uh, 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 you know, or servant leadership, all of those elements would fall under the people domain. Next is process. So the process domain would, would, you know, basically deal with all the, you know, technical aspects of project management. So when I say technical aspects of project management, you need to understand that, you know, project management along with managing people, it's a lot about managing uh, tools, creating plans, uh, you know, uh, you know, entering some data in a software, doing analysis, um, you know, of how the project is performing. So all of those elements are basically addressed in the process domain. So if you, if you're aware of the different knowledge areas that are there, in the PMP exam. So, uh, you know, for example, you have 10 knowledge areas, right? Um, uh, in the PMP exam, so there would be knowledge areas like scope, there would be knowledge areas like cost, there would be knowledge area like schedule, uh, quality, and so on and so forth, right? So there are 10 areas. They basically, the process domain would deal with all these different knowledge areas. And, you know, it would, it would primarily deal with the specific processes or the specific work that you would do in, let's say, the cost uh, 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 knowledge area or in the schedule knowledge area. For example, how are you going to plan a schedule? How are you going to uh, uh, control your schedule? How are you going to plan your cost? How are you going to control your cost? You know, what techniques you may use for the purpose of controlling cost or for the purpose of controlling schedule? You know, what tools you may use for quality and so on and so forth. So all of these elements would basically, basically be covered in the process domain. So to, to really get answers right in the process domain, you need to have a solid understanding of the PMBOK, right? Um, basically, you need to at least, you know, go through the PMBOK once because there are a lot of tools and techniques that are normally covered, you know, in the PMBOK. 
uh, and I'll get to that as well, you know, when we talk about the uh, tools and techniques. So uh, this would be, uh, this would be version six. This would be PM box six of, uh, you know, the, the last version that was there. I'll get to that as well, like which version you need to refer to, but uh, you know, let's keep going for the time being. But just to answer your question for now, you know, you just need to focus on PM box six. Okay, now when we talk about the business environment, basically the business environment is everything to do with, uh, you know, how, you know, so a project exists in an organization, right? Um, basically the point here is that, you know, a, a project is trying to bring some business benefit to the organization. Maybe it could be, you know, launching a new product in a new market or, uh, you know, enhancing an existing product, uh, you know, by making it more appealing. Uh, you know, there are so many reasons why you may undertake a project, uh, you know, for compliance issues, uh, you know, for, uh, uh, for uh, market share, for profitability, uh, whatever is your reason you know, you may undertake a project and the business environment domain deals with all the strategic elements of project management. So this would be things like the project charter, uh, you know, how is the project selected? Uh, how do you write a project charter? Um, you know, what are the key elements that would, uh, uh, that need to be taken care of? Uh, you know, when you're writing a project charter, how do you build a business case? What are the elements of a business case? What is the purpose of a business case? all of these elements would fall under the business environment domain. So as a project manager, you need to ensure that you are, you know, taking care of the, uh, you know, the business environment domain as well. But as you can see, you know, the business environment domain, the focus on that is not a lot, you know, it's just 8%. But having said that, you know, if you get a question from project selection techniques, or if you get a question related to the project charter, you basically, you know, they're trying to test you on, you know, the business, uh, the business environment domain. So, uh, you know, so basically when you download the PMP exam eco, right. Um, uh, P PMP exam content outline, you know, you would, they would basically show you domain, uh, tasks and, uh, sorry, just, uh, and enablers. Basically each domain, you know, is like a high level category that you have under each domain, you will have several tasks and, you know, these tasks are basically carried out to fulfill the domain. So to be able to, uh, you know, carry out the work of that domain properly, you need to basically carry out all those tasks. So that's the whole idea of, uh, you know, having this, uh, you know, this domain, this task. So under, you know, you broadly have three domains and under, uh, and totally under all these three domains, you have a total of uh, 35 tasks, right? And under the tasks, you will have your uh, enablers as well. All right. Thanks for watching the video. Like I said, at the beginning of the video, we conduct free virtual classes for PMP aspirants, where we clarify all pertinent questions related to the PMP exam. So go ahead and register for the class. Link is in the description below. Also check out this Udemy course that we've created on the Agile Practice Guide, which is the main reference book for the PMP exam. Greater than 50% of the PMP exam is now Agile. So understanding the Agile Practice Guide is extremely critical for your PMP exam prep strategy. This is also the only course on the Agile Practice Guide on Udemy, which means it has a razor sharp focus on exactly what you need to know for the PMP exam. You can use the coupon code below and get this course at a discounted price. Finally, I'd like to make an important announcement. We are going to have very soon an in-class workshop that talks about the PMP exam psychology, where we'll help you develop the mental muscle to tackle tricky and difficult PMP exam questions like a pro. This workshop will be a 10 to 12 hour class where we'll help you develop the right mindset to crack the PMP exam in your first attempt. And we are doing this at a cost where you won't even have to battle an eyelid. So while we are working on the web page, if you need more information about this class, shoot us an email at info at careersprints.com and we'll send you over all the information about the class. Thanks for watching the video. Watch out for this space for new videos that we regularly create 
and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more useful content. Thank you.